the Department of Justice criminal investigation of Derek Chauvin, looking now into an alleged incident from 2017 involving a 14-year-old boy. T.J. Holmes is here with this story. Good morning, T.J. Cecilia, good morning to you. We know Chauvin knelt on top of George Floyd for 9 minutes and 29 seconds. He allegedly knelt on top of a teenage boy for 17 minutes. The jury didn't get to hear about that, nor about a lot of the other incidents and complaints in Chauvin's personnel file. But now, even after the guilty verdicts, Chauvin's past life and behavior are under scrutiny. On the heels of that DOJ announcement of an investigation into the Minneapolis Police Department's practices as a whole, sources now tell us that the DOJ's ongoing criminal investigation of convicted murderer Derek Chauvin is also looking at a September 2017 incident involving a black teenager. The confrontation was captured by body cameras and the video was presented to the judge in Chauvin's just concluded murder trial. That's according to the state prosecutor, Matthew Frank, who wanted to tell the jury about the case. Chauvin was dispatched to a home on a domestic dispute call between a mother and her son. After entering the home, officers told the son to lie on the ground, which he refused. Chauvin allegedly then hit the 14-year-old boy in the head so hard he needed stitches, grabbing the teen by the throat, causing him to lose consciousness and fall to the ground. Frank wrote, noting the teen's ear began bleeding, and about a minute after going to the ground, the child began repeatedly telling the officer that he could not breathe. He allegedly held the boy down with his knee for nearly 17 minutes. The U.S. Justice Department is still weighing whether to bring federal charges against Chauvin. We also have more information this morning about Chauvin's life on the force and off. Despite several commendations and awards during his 19-year career, Chauvin was named in at least 17 complaints, including one alleging excessive force during a traffic stop. But the jury, who found Chauvin guilty on all three counts, was not privy to the entirety of that information. An alternate juror in the case, Lisa Christensen, is speaking out about the toll the trial took on her. I didn't think it would affect me as much as it has. It, it was emotional. It was draining. Christensen believes Chauvin is guilty and says the pulmonologist, Dr. Tobin, was a key witness for the state. I feel like he could actually point out going through the video and saying, hey, at this instance right here is when Mr. Floyd lost his life. Uh, we mentioned those 17 complaints against him in his file. Only one resulted in any type of action, any discipline, and those were simply letters of reprimand. We do want to mention also there's a brand new ABC News Washington Post poll finds that 60 percent of Americans say the country should do more to hold police accountable for mistreatment of blacks in this country. 63 percent say black people and other minorities do not receive equal treatment. And a reminder, Cecilia, sentencing for Chauvin is expected in June. Okay, TJ, thanks. We're going to talk about all this right now with ABC News Chief Legal Analyst Dan Abrams. Dan, let's just go right there with what TJ was saying, that Chauvin had this case allegedly using his knee to hold down a teenager for nearly 17 minutes. Why wouldn't the jury have heard about a case like that? So uh, typically, you don't admit in what are called bad acts, prior incidents, even prior crimes against a defendant in a trial because you want the jury to decide the case based on the evidence in front of it. You don't want them saying, well, he seems like the kind of guy who would do X, Y, or Z. Now, there are certain exceptions. Uh, if you can show, for example, that it shows it's his M.O., uh, this is the way he deals with things. If there's a specific reason related to the case, the judge did allow prosecutors to present certain limited information about Chauvin's past, but not this incident. And, and you think back to the trial, you think how much of uh, George Floyd's past, particularly his struggles with addiction, came up in that trial. Um, but, but you don't hear in-depth details about Chauvin's policing history. Is that unusual? Could it come up in sentencing? Uh, yes, it will come up in sentencing, meaning at sentencing you have a, a much bigger opportunity, a broader opportunity to present evidence about who the person is. And that's going to come in front of the judge. And I think a lot of what we're talking about is going to be heard uh, by the judge in the context of sentencing. With regard to George Floyd, again, the judge did not allow in a, a lot of evidence that the defense wanted about George Floyd. But in this case, the defense was that it could have been a drug overdose and there were drugs found in his system in this case not that it was some other case not that he used drugs and that therefore shows something it was related specifically the judge ruled in this case and that's why you heard some of that information about george floyd's past drug use from the prosecution by the way as well in an effort to say that this was not the cause of his death here
Okay, Dan, thank you so much. And tonight on a two hour special of edition of 2020, an intimate portrait of George Floyd's life told by those closest to him. That is tonight at 9 Eastern right here on ABC.